Hey everybody, welcome to ASHP's Student Guide to the Clinical ASHP Mid-Year Meeting and Residency Showcase. My name is Ashley Wengrove McCracken and I am going to walk you through this webinar today. I got my PharmD from University of Colorado Skagg School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences and I'm completing a residency combined PGY1, PGY2 community-based pharmacy administration and leadership residency at Johns Hopkins Home Care Group. I've been attending mid-year for the last four years as both a student and resident, so I'm hoping today I can go through what mid-year is, the showcase, some tips and tricks to make you the most successful attendee at the meeting. So a quick overview, what is mid-year clinical meeting? This is an annual pharmacy conference. It's the largest gathering of pharmacists worldwide, and it is a huge venue for pharmacy professionals to update their knowledge, network extensively, enhance particular skills, and then learn more about innovative products and technologies. Here you can see ASHP's mid-year webpage, midyear.ashp.org. This will have all the information you will need to navigate mid-year. There's lots of it, so we're kind of going to break it down a little bit to help you be successful. So first and foremost, mid-year registration. Make sure you book your registration hotel and travel early to get early bird rates. It's super important that you know that ASHP's um, website is the only place that you can book your registration for the conference through. Um, ASHP does not coordinate with outside vendors for registration, so it's only valid on the ASHP website. If you have any questions about registration or booking a hotel or travel, please feel free to contact ASHP customer service. The phone number is here. You can also um, get more information on how to electronically contact them on our webpage under Contact Us. So, what should you pack? This is a business professional conference, so business professional attire is super important. We'll kind of go into some tips on that on the next slide. You also want to make sure you have business cards. Um, a lot of times schools will help you print those or have logos or certain templates that you can use. Updated copies of your CV, hard copies printed out is important. A portfolio, a notepad, or a pad folio just to keep your CVs in, your cards keep you organized. Portable cell phone charger, there are charging stations throughout the conference, but if you want to have one with you, it's always a great thing to bring. Comfortable shoes, it's a huge conference. You can only imagine with over 25,000 people how big it is, so make sure you're comfortable the whole time. Snacks, a water bottle, stay hydrated. There are water stations to fill it up throughout. Hand sanitizer, because we are in the middle of flu season, so and you're going to be shaking lots of hands, make sure you bring that. Gum or mint. And if you are presenting a poster, make sure you bring the poster with you. So that's really important. Some tips on business professional attire you can see here. The most important thing to keep in mind is um, business professional is not flashy. So making sure that you are looking classic, um, minimalistic, make sure you look clean, um, well put together, hair either back, well kept, neutral polishes, um, well fitted. Just make sure you look um, polished up and ready to go. No flashy attire, that's a good way to get recognized and maybe not in the most positive fashion. So making sure that you're clean and ready to go. So how should I navigate mid-year clinical meeting? Well, we have a website, midyearashp.org, which I mentioned earlier, and this updates continually all the way up until mid-year. So make sure you keep checking it. It has all information on the special sessions, the full schedule, speakers, location, and networking events. Um, sometimes now that we have phones accessible, we do have a great app called ASHP Live, and that can give you the same information the website can give you on the information on special sessions and the speakers. So it can help you um, look through the schedule, identify what you want to see, where it's at, what time it's at, you can flag those and make an individual schedule so you're making sure you're on time and in the right places at the right time um, based off of your preferences. There's also great conference communications on the app, so if there's a special session going on or um, 
to remind you to go to the keynotes, it'll send you an alert. So then you're like, oh yeah, I need to do that. So that's also a great advantage of downloading the app on your phone as well. Some program highlights, there's a lot of different programming opportunities at mid-year and some are tailored just for students. Um, the student sessions, there are a student um, keynote session and opening session, but there also is a general session. As a student, you are welcome to go to any and all programming. Um, just wanted to highlight that student programming is kind of specialized to you and kind of reviews things that you are thinking about. Student Society Showcase and Clinical Skills Competition are also going on at the same time. There's numerous and countless networking opportunities. Residency Showcase, which we'll talk more about, and Personal Placement Service, or PPS. Poster presentations, and then the exhibit hall is where manufacturers and different um, innovative technologies you can walk through and kind of get a good idea of what new and upcoming things are going on in our industry. So lots going on. Um, the app will definitely help you navigate exactly where you should be and what things to go to. Like I said, networking at mid-year is everywhere. I would suggest having a friend or pharmacist or employer um, to help you um, network through all of the different avenues. Uh, pharmacy is a small world. You probably hear that a lot. So um, when you introduce yourself, you say where you're from, school you're from, or program you're from, a lot of times um, those individuals may know somebody you know. So that's a great way and icebreaker. Um, trying to attend these events is really imperative, especially if you want to increase your network um, and your visibility across the profession. So there's more information on the website of different networking sessions that you should check out. So the residency showcase and PPS. So the Residency Showcase is huge. Here you can see a picture from a past Residency Showcase. You can see there's lots of people, lots going on, lots of information. So this um, is, I'm going to walk you through some steps to make this the most successful and um, productive time when you're going through the Residency Showcase. So the purpose of this showcase is basically information exchange. So it's in-person contact with different programs. It's kind of a pre-screening for the residents and the programs to just kind of meet one another. It's not a full job interview and it's not a job offer. So it's really just information exchange. These residency showcase um, times are Monday evening, Tuesday morning, and Tuesday evening. These are all all um, of the times in each program is assigned one time during the residency so showcase. So that's really important to know. If you're looking at different programs, note that it's only at one of these sessions. So keep that in mind when we're going through our preparation talk. Access to the showcase is included with your mid-year registration, so there's no extra fee. However, you do need a badge um, to enter the showcase, not only to enter the showcase, but really to do anything at mid-year. Make sure you always have your badge on you. They won't let you into the exhibit hall. They won't let you in your poster session. They, you really need to make sure you have that badge at all times. Just a note for P1 through 3 students, Showcase is open to you guys during the second half of the session. So make sure you're allowing the first half of the session to give priority to the P4 students who are seeking those programs. Um, make sure you limit your time at each program and tell the program what year in school you are so that they have an idea of who you're talking to and how they can tailor their communication to what level you're at. Um, this is it's okay for you to go in there, just make sure you're giving priority to those students that are seeking this. There is student programming available during the showcase times, and that's really designated or designed for you as P1 through 3s. It really can help you prepare for the residency process, work on your professional skills, um, network with each other, work on your CV, lots of different things going on at that time, so make sure you check that out as well. Here are the six steps that I think help you um, navigate through a successful showcase. We'll go through each of these individually um, and talk about how you can make the most and productive time out of your mid-year experience.
Step one is to define your interests. Go ahead and write down what your career goals are, um, what practice type you're thinking about going into, is it clinical, is it research, um, what your desired credentials are, are you interested in business and you want to get your MBA or public health, your master's of public health, there are lots of different avenues for pharmacists, so really keeping in mind what is it that you want to do. Um, is your goal to go to residency or after residency, what are you thinking about? So a lot of characteristics that people think specifically about are geographic location. Are you limited to a certain area? Um, do you prefer a certain setting? Are you interested in a large academic medical center that does a lot of um, medication, um, drug, or um, I apologize, but they do a, a bunch of different things in research and um, cutting edge, or are you interested in close-knit, community-based hospital settings? Program size is also good. Do you want a lot of res co-residents, um, lower number of co-residents? Really is personalized. Program history, if they're accredited, what kind of opportunities they can offer you? Um, and then do they have additional program offerings such as a teaching certificate or do they offer a degree with the residency? Those are all things to consider when you're defining your interests. So once you have a good idea of what you want, you want to make sure you develop your list. So utilizing ASHP's residency directory is really important. You can copy and paste this link into Google Chrome, or you can go ahead and go to the ASHP website. Um, on the second tab over is professional development. Click on that, then click on residency information, and the directory option will be right there. This is Important to note because this directory is different than um, previous the previous directory. If you Google ASHP directory, it may bring up the wrong one. So making sure you're really accessing it through this link or via the ASHP website to make sure you're at the right place. So this helps provide up-to-date information on each program. It gives you contact information on the program, their specific web page, and then very general summary descriptions and benefits for that um, residency. So here is a great photo of what the new platform looks like. You can see here that you can search by program types, so PGY1, PGY2, or combined programs. There are subcategories for specialties, and then you can also um, search geographically, so you can select a state, and it brings up this great satellite map view of all the different programs um, that you are looking for. So this is really nice. Um, if you see this, you're on the right website. If you're looking through a directory that doesn't quite look like this, then you may be on the old directory. So make sure you navigate through the web page. When you're developing your list, make sure you're narrowing down programs um, based off those interests you came up with in step one. So there's lots of filters on the directory for you to help with this. Um, each program has their own individual web page. So the directory gives you that summary, like I said, but when you click on the web page, you can really find a lot more information. Um, develop a personal method for evaluating programs. So this is just one example that I came up with when I was going through residency programs, but it might not work for everybody. What I did is I used an Excel document. I wrote down the program name, the location, and then listed out the priorities I was looking for specifically in a residency program. I would go through the directory and I'd type in the name, um, all the information, click off wh what types of things they had. This just helped me to visually see what programs really had all the different characteristics I was looking for and which ones may not be a good fit. But whatever works for you is best. This is just one example. Step three is to identify program times and locations. So on the mid-year website under residency showcase, there is a lot of information for prospective applicants. Um, there is a residency program listing portal and it shows all the programs that will be in attendance at mid-year. The schedule, so like we um, talked about earlier, the three different times on Monday and Tuesday. And then um, make sure that you note that the program um, number and that's the table number. As a reminder, the programs are only at one of the showcase times so for example, um, when I was 
looking at where I'm currently doing my residency at Johns Hopkins Home Care Group. They were only Tuesday, and I made sure I went to that time. Um, I knew the number, and it's oh, they're only there at that time. The website also helps you with this because it has a floor plan. So here's an example of the residency showcase floor plan. Um, it is specific for each section. So you can see on the left-hand side, it says Monday from 1 to 4 p.m. So this is just Monday's floor plan. Um, it's not going to co correlate to all the other times. It may change. So making sure you're looking at the right floor plan based off the program time. And then it has a list of all the numbers of the booths on there. So that can help you identify where your program will be. When you walk into the showcase, there is a map. It lists all the programs during that showcase time, and you can find the booth number. But I recommend kind of making a game plan before you walk in, making sure you know which aisles you're probably going to be going into, and then map out the most efficient route when you're talking to all the programs. This can help um, you navigate it a little bit better, but it's also a way to help you for step four, which is prepare questions for each program. So researching the prospective programs that you're looking at is so imperative. So using that website that I talked about a little bit earlier that you can find on the residency directory link, you can make sure um, you're getting the most up-to-date information by looking at their specific website. This is really great to help um, reference items and come up with questions. Make sure that you're not asking anything that you can find easily on the website. That's definitely a pet peeve of a lot of residency directors and preceptors. Make sure you're specific and concise and courteous with other attendees. Um, that being said, when you're talking to a director, asking questions and there's somebody behind you, you know, just open up the circle a little bit to let them come in too. They may have similar questions. It kind of helps um, the director not talk as much, but also invites other people. It's a good first impression to have. And then um, use a tracking method for the questions you want to ask. This is, once again, just an example I used. Um, everybody has a different preference. But in my Excel document, I wrote down the program name, um, or that the topic, but the session number, the date and time, because making sure that each program is only at one date and time, the booth number that they're at, and then the specific questions I wanted to ask during that session. And I printed these out and brought it with me when I was walking around just to make sure I was prepared when I walked up. Step five is to obtain business cards and contact information. So anybody you talk to um, could be resident, preceptors, or residency directors, make sure you ask them for a business card. Uh, this is a great way to jog your memory and make sure you're like, oh yes, I did talk to that individual from that place. You're gonna talk to a lot of people so this is a good way to keep that straight. Additionally, once you walk away, so not when you're at the booth, when you walk away, write down a few notes on the back of that business card or in your notebook with some key facts and reminders. And this will really, really help you um, when you're doing your step six, which is follow-up. So follow-up with the program should be within five business days. And this is just a very brief message and it's personalized to those topics that you wrote down on the back of your card of things that you discussed. Make sure you express gratitude for their time and state that you're continued, um, you continue to have interest in their program. If you're not interested in a program, you really do not need to follow up. But if you are, this is an excellent way to ensure that you're still on their radar moving forward. Some general tips and tricks for the residency showcase is it's super important to remain professional and calm at all times and being respectful of time. So making sure that you're spending only about five to 10 minutes per booth, this just gives other candidates um, good time to talk to individuals and it shows that you're courteous of their time. Also, utilize the resources provided throughout the showcase. So there are tables for preparing um, for networking and reviewing notes. So when you grab that business card, you can walk over to a table just to kind of regroup before your next um, discussion. There's water stations to keep you hydrated um, and hand sanitizers throughout. You'll be shaking lots of hands. I talked about that. And it is flu season, so just be conscious of that.
So that was a lot of information. Now we're going to move right into professional or personal placement service or PPS. It is another offering at mid-year and um, usually about 1,500 pharmacy students and residents and practitioners and 400 employers um, come to the PPS to participate. So PPS is an individualized or small group interview, and it's usually typically about 30 minutes or so. And it's really an opportunity to ask and answer in-depth questions with programs. So this isn't intended for all applicants. And there's, it's intended for students that are seeking PGY1, PGY2 combined residency programs, since you'll be spending a little bit more time at that program. Um, various fellowships, including industry fellowships, and then intended for residents who are seeking specialty PGY1 residencies and jobs after. So this is really um, a good way to get more one-on-one um, -on -one contact with those programs that you are interested in when you're looking at those. So some logistics for PPS, P1 through 3 students are not eligible. It's intended to find, or it's not intended to finalize residency or job offers on site. It's really just kind of an introduction to those programs. You can coordinate um, PPS interviews with the showcase. So if you're um, not participating in PPS, you can go to the showcase instead. It really depends exactly what you're looking for, since this is only intended for the certain audiences such as the combined residency fellowships, PGY2 specialty, and certain jobs. There is an extra fee. Um, you may you must register separate from clinical meeting to participate. And these hours are Sunday through Wednesday. It's an online portal that you sign up for um, when you go in and you register. You kind of upload a mini CV about yourself and then you upload your actual CV on the website. And when you're looking at different programs, you can request an interview. It sends your information to that program. The program can review your CV and then um, say they want to schedule with you and send you times. So scheduling is very individual based off of the program. It's through the PPS platform. If you have any more questions on this, just make sure you visit midyear.ashp.org slash PPS. Um, it can tell you more about how to register and um, how to navigate through that platform. Some tips for PPS is make sure that you're preparing a little more questions than you did for the showcase if you are participating, since you do have a little more time with these individuals. Bring your business cards and CV copies for each interview. Um, I had about three people ask me for my CV during PPS interviews, so it's really important that you have a CV printed for each interview you do have. And make sure you prepare for specific questions. It is, it is a mini interview, so they will ask you some generic questions. I just wrote down a few that I definitely got during PPS or during my residency interviews. Number one being tell me about yourself. In order to prepare for this question, make sure you have your elevator speech ready. So a quick one to two minute spiel about who you are, where you're from, a little bit about your background and what your interests are. That way you're prepared anytime somebody asks you that question, which you'll be asked a lot during this meeting. This is a lot of information, but there is a ton more out there on ASHP's website. Um, in regard to mid-year programming information, um, student residency guides, residency showcase information, PPS information, and then we do have the ASHB Connect platform where you can type in questions and get answers from your peers or um, ASHB staff or anybody that's gone through this um, experience before. So this kind of really helps you navigate, gives you more information. There's lots more you can look at if you still have questions. So the three major takeaways from today's webinar are to prepare, network, and most importantly, have fun at mid-year. It's a great experience, lots going on. Just make sure that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into and you prepare for each of your sessions. Of course, if you have any additional questions, you may always contact ASHP Customer Service and the information is here. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.